Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Fully Informed Trade, or Fi Trade for short, knowledge for everyone. My name is Alex Cho, and today I'm just going to go ahead and analyze all of the major uh, sectors in the stock market while talking about the stock market. Now somebody had a quick question on my downtrend, downtrend analysis in the Dow component, and let's examine it real quick. 2009 lows. 2010 lows, and then eventually 2011 lows. This was a long-term trend line. It was broken. So not we're in a long-term downtrend just because we broke a three-year long trend support area. Now, there are very, very reasonable fundamental expla explanations for why people aren't buying this market. I tried explaining them, and it went well, well over how much... How much uh, yeah, I just... It just couldn't be fit into a single video. It, it, realistically speaking, it wasn't something I could explain in less than 20 minutes. Uh, so, essentially, this right here, boom, boom, and boom, this is, we're just going to talk pure technical analysis for today. This is a high, this is a high, this is a low. This is another low, this is a lower high. Lower highs three times in a row. There's a lower low, there's a lower low, and you could consider this to be a low. I was anticipating this low to eventually break down and go down to around 9,000 something, but it didn't happen. And that's because the central banks came along and decided to ensure some measure of safety for every major financial institution. Now, this kind of goes both ways. First of all, um, based on that short term event, markets were able to rally, but they weren't able to break above that previous area of resistance right there. So they, they, we're still at a lower high trajectory because unless this goes above 12,200 and breaks above and continues to go higher, we're still in a short term or medium term downtrend. This is the longer term downtrend right here that was broken. Or this is the medium, no, this is the longer term uptrend that was broken right here back in July of 2011. This is our markets not being able to break above that previous trend line right here. And not very feasible based on our economic outlook. And right here, this is still our higher high. This is our lower lows, consecutive consecutive lows right here, right here, and right here, with consecutive lower 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 lows right here, right here. So lower highs and lower lows. And let's consider that this high right here was never broken by this high right here back at two third twelve thousand eight hundred. Between these areas right here and right here, this market was never never able to break above that previous high. So essentially these markets have never been able to break above the multi-year, uh, and I'm talking about multi-decade approach to determining whether or not you're in an uptrend or a downtrend, essentially. Now, based on what we're seeing right here, we're still on a downtrend, and I can't show you guys a multi-year, 100-year chart, but if I did, you guys would realize we're still on a downtrend. Because this high right here back in 2011 was never able to break that 2007 high right there. Until we get above that, we are still in a multi-year cyclical downtrend in the stock market because we have never produced a positive return from 2007 onwards. Therefore, we're still in a downtrend. That's a longer-term downtrend. Now, the medium-term downtrend, the past three years, let's talk about the past three years. This is also negative because, look, 2009 to 2011, we broke that major support area, and the longer the downtrend, or the longer the trend line, and once that trend line is broken, that's considered a negative trend right there, a negative multi-year trend. And then let's consider the lower highs and the lower lows. Right there, right there. So essentially this market is still in, is still in a downtrend and the economic outlook going into 2012, 2013, and 2014 is negative. So um, there's no real reason for us to be buying high-tech growth stocks and I will go over that in this video later on. Well, let's talk about the day's action. Markets were able to bounce a little higher. This was kind of surprising for me, considering the potential downgrades that were coming on the European session. Um, I don't know where the blind optimism is coming from, but apparently there's, some, there's, there's a little bit of optimism left in this market. Let's look at the US dollar index. The US dollar index has been able to find some support on the 20-day moving average, and it has been able to do so for the last five, seven sessions. Now, the longer a market consolidates on a moving average, um, the more likely it is for it to be broken, right? Because 
essentially, if, if you're able to hold on to a moving average, and the longer time you're able to hang, hang around one, the, the more likely it is you are eventually going to break below it because you're giving it a ton of opportunity to do so. But now, considering what's going on in Europe, we have to consider the double-edged sword, which is essentially either Europe goes into, uh, if Europe becomes a mess and the downgrades occur and eventually Greece goes for default, um, in some countries go through severe austerity, the Europe, the Euro will have to strengthen. Right? Because essentially, this US dollar index is weighed half by the Euro. Half of it is the Euro. And if the Euro continues its downward trend to the Euro US dollar, the US dollar index has no choice but to go higher. And the Euro is pulling back from that 20 day moving average. Now, this right here, again, the longer you touch the 20 day moving average, the more likely it is eventually at some point you break it. But at the same time, because it hasn't been able to break it for so long, you got to wonder whether or not this market really has what it takes to break above. And um, right now, it's, it's, it's starting to become very doubtful. It's starting to look like a downwards channel on a 20 day moving average. And the same can be said for the, 20, the, the dollar index. It's, it's able to find consistent support while trending higher. Because if you look, each close is kind of above its previous close almost. Um, after falling down, it has been able to consistently go higher. Now this could be a bear flag pattern where it eventually goes lower, but if we have something negative come out of Europe, this dollar index could eventually go higher instead and move into a hockey stick pattern. See this hockey stick right here? That's a hockey stick pattern right there. Okay, so we're either looking at a bear flag where you have a flag right here, flag formation, right? Or you, we can consider the opposite, which is the hockey stick. Those are your two options. Um, now, based on what we're seeing out of Europe, whether you get austerity or a couple of nations get bankrupt or the Eurozone gets divided, all of them are negative. And these are issues that have compounded over the course of 30 years, and it's going to take a couple decades for them to fix themselves. So no matter what you do, there will still be negative consequences, what those European leaders are going to do. Now, those European leaders are, are, are given a choice amongst best, op, best options. And their best option is to go through severe austerity, to save the bond investors so that the bond investors don't lose a couple trillion dollars. That's the best option they have. The second option is to essentially eject a couple European Union members, allow them to go bankrupt and salvage the remainder while still trying to go through severe austerity. The only problem with that is now all those countries that were ejected out of the eurozone, how are what what currency will they use? What currency standard will they go by? And if they use a different currency standard, how will the banks that own those mortgages that were issued under the idea of receiving euros in return, how are they going to get paid back? So the idea of a eurozone breaking apart is extremely chaotic in concept because these banks that lent out money in euros, what are they going to get paid back with? What is the standard? And how are you going to determine what your current currency is worth in proportion to what the euro was worth previously? And where would the transfer rate come in? It's just a really complicated idea behind changing currency standards. So changing currency standards will negatively impact every European bank. So that's the worst solution, um, breaking apart the euro zone, at least over the short term. Over the short term, the stimulus packages and the continuous bailout, the bailout, the bailout, the bailout, the bailout will eventually lead to a long-term catastrophe and the death of the euro as well. So your best option comes back to stimulus, not stimulus, but austerity. Severe austerity, cutting back expenses on all levels, and eventually hoping for a recovery in the economy maybe by the year 2030 or 2025. That's probably what they're going to go for economic recovery by the year 2025 through 2030, build the economy on a strong base and experience short-term losses, both politically and economically. That's the best choice they have, and therefore I'm going to stick with the hockey stick formation where eventually this movement right here where it goes sideways for a while and continue, continues to go higher will eventually break out 
and this is going to cause the hockey stick to emerge where eventually the dollar index just shoots upwards above that 20 day moving average. Now let's examine the Euro US dollar. The Euro US dollar, I think this bear flag pattern won't play out. I really don't think it will. I don't think uh, I don't think this bull flag pattern will play out. And what's what's the bull flag right here? Well, oh man, my chart just kind of wigged out on me. But essentially the bear flag pattern is right here. Boom. So essentially, this bear flag pattern will it play out? I don't think so. I think something major is happening in Europe right now. I think all those banks, this, all these central banks, have come out to protect Europe, P and banks, for the sake of an eventual default that may happen. And the only state that's really close to default right now is Greece and Ireland and Portugal. If those countries default, it wouldn't be a surprise because they are they are well beyond repair well beyond repair. It wouldn't matter how much money you tax the citizens, once those taxes take into effect, you're going to cause extreme economic contraction. And without economic activity to pay off those interest rates, those high interest rate loans, you will never receive a positive account balance. That It will never occur in Greece. So therefore, I think Greece will have to default at some point. Healthcare. I think healthcare will do okay. The most it could probably decline is probably going back to the 2009 lows, and that's probably around $22. So it would probably go down by around 33% if it were ever to get that bad again. But healthcare overall shouldn't be impacted too negatively, mainly because there's a lot of people retiring, and therefore all those people that are going to retire are still going to need healthcare, and our social services or our social programs will still remain intact throughout a major um, austerity measure, whether or not it's in the United States or Europe. So healthcare should be okay because the social, we still have enough money to pay for our social programs, but we would have to cut back expenses in a lot of other areas. Industrial select sector, okay, commodities will just get hurt badly and manufacturing will go down. So I don't see any reason to be buying into manufacturing or commodities right now. Tech sector. Tech sector is hot now, but it won't be hot in the future, at least over the short term. It went all the way down to $13, then it went up by $25. That's more than 100% gain. Um, again, I can see tech sector getting hurt really badly, so I would avoid tech. Utility sector should be fine. Um, utility sector does provide a lot of longer term dividends. The most it could de decline by is probably reached its previous 2009 lows. But again, utilities are very consistent over the longer term. So I would recommend utilities. Take care, folks, and I hope this explains a lot of things to you guys. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment right below. I'll get back to you.